Gavin Newsom in studio. Lieutenant Governor Gavin Newsom, Citizenville, name of his latest book, How to Take the town square digital and reinvent government available on amazon and as we like to tell you if you're going to go to amazon and grab gavin's book go to amcrawl.com click through the amazon banner and keep a little wind in our pirate ship good to see you gavin (laughs) good to be here thanks for having me on gavin i was reading up on gavin today and i did not know he was a wine guy a wine guy i have a real job yeah. I'm not just you know one of those takers in politics taking your taxpayer dollars I, in my pocket. In your in your, I I, I gave him a little uh, hit off the mangria before he came in. Just That's to, serious stuff. Just to in, in, in my own backyard, I've got a couple of wineries, and now I started right out of college, opened a little wine store, and got in the restaurant business, and then found my way into actually growing grapes. Well, the thing that I found impressive when I was reading your uh, IMDb or Wikipedia or whichever it was uh, yeah. this morning was, um. You started off in a business, and you started running that business, and it became successful, and then you had a little run-in with an inspector. <laughs> well and, done. That's, you did read up. Well and done. he wanted you to put in a sink to the tune of $27,000. Can't make it up. And in a place that was unnecessary, like a mop sink where there was carpet or something uh, like 100% that. 100% right. Here I am opening my little wine store. Uh, create some jobs. Everyone's preaching the importance of job creation. I'm 23, 24 years old, my first business. And then the health inspector comes by and says, where's your mop sink? I said, what, what the heck are you talking about, mop sink? And the place is completely carpeted, to your point. And I'm like, what, what am I going to mop? He goes, well, that's the code. It says you got to have a mop sink. So I refused to do it, which was dumb. Right. Uh, Because it delayed the heck out of me. And we finally had to recant, and I finally put in the mop sink. Today, we just had our 20th anniversary. That damn mop sink is still there. It's never been used except to, uh, and appropriately so, water plants. Right. Uh, And so that, that, that got me immediately engaged. And what was going on at City Hall. And that's how I found my way into politics because I was proverbially mad as hell. And who the hell's running this place? And don't they understand the importance of small business creation and job creators? Well, no, they don't. <laughs> Honestly, they don't give a shit. It's why, that's why California is last in building codes and you know, how oh, long man. it takes to build and last in when it, whenever they do those surveys of who wants to start a small business nine years in a row worst place co magazine to do business in america and we got to turn that around we well, can talk more about a that. lot of it is their arrogance they're yeah. arrogant they you. walk into your home onto your property i used to be a contractor yeah. these guys walk onto the job site start yelling at people tell people to go home get off that ladder put that stuff down and then they do things like this like i remember i was building my house First off, they act like you, they lent you $10,000 to start a small business. <laughs> you pay them for the privilege of them coming in and hassling you. Basically, is how it works. And by the way, with all these. Oh, those are the fees. You're exactly right. There's a direct correlation oh. you pay to be inspected. So you're not exaggerating that point. I was doing one of my houses, and I was doing the dishwasher. And I got tired of that weird snorkel breather hose thing that shows up on the on the countertop right it it, it makes Uh, a weird noise right so i had one of these european stainless steel twelve hundred dollar jobs and they said well you can install it with one of the breather snorkels or you can do a a loop installation that's breather less and i said well that's what i'm going with I don't want to drill a hole in my granite countertop and put the weird snorkel thing in there. What is the purpose of that thing? It's it's just a breather so that uh, sewage doesn't get in backwash into the thing to cause contamination. But Fisher Paykel or whoever the manufacturer is has come up with a way, and I'm, I'm I'm assuming it's a safe way. Otherwise, they're going to be sued out of business to install their product minus one. So the inspector came by and he did the same thing he did with you in the mop. Yeah. He said, "Where's the breather?" I said, "Well, you don't need one on this one." He said, "You're putting a kitchen in. You're putting a dishwasher in. You need a breather." I said, "Not according to Fisher Paykel." And he said, "No, nope, <laughs> you're putting a breather." And I said, "Listen, take the manual that they have." You know, thir- page 38A, br- that's the breather. 38B, breatherless installation. And he goes, you know what? Let me take this to my supervisor. Yep. And he took it to a supervisor. And three days later, he came back and he said, no can do. Put the breather in there. 
And so what I did is I pulled out the soap dispenser. I hooked it up to the breather. I got it signed off on. And as soon as his fat ass <laughs> hit his crappy truck, I pulled it out, pulled the breather out, put soap dispenser back in, and I'm fucking happy about it. And but you're that's hardly, where we're at. I hear you, and you're hardly the only one. I mean, this, I know, this examples all happen all the time. Well, what are we doing? It's and frustrating. We've got to change. We've got to humanize government. We've got to change the rules. We've got to make more flexible, more adaptable. We've got to make things. Uh, you know, this is the whole. I, I don't want to go back to my book, go. just be that apologetic book, but this is exactly why I wrote this book. Uh, you know, you talk about going on Amazon where, you know, we could sit there and order our groceries, buy, uh, you know, a TV set and shoes and have them delivered overnight uh, on our doorstep. And then you walk into the DMV. Right. Enough said. You know, right. I mean, the fact is we have a complete disconnect. And for government, let me dare I say it at peril of being quoted, but for too many of, of us, the interaction with government sucks. Yeah. And it's dehumanizing, not humanizing. Uh, and why is it that the rest of the world gets this and businesses get this, where they're customizing services? We have standard services. And we're living in a world where people want more choices. But in government, it seems like every day we're getting less and less choices. Intractability, clay layer bureaucracy, a civil service system that stifles ingenuity and entrepreneurialism. All of that must change. Clay Layer was my gay porn name in the mid-'80s, by the was way. Was it? How, um, were you successful? You I made the rounds. And people made... in the business knew who I was. All right. Well, that's all. You're out of the business. He was, you didn't like, know. He was like a porn star's porn star. Yeah. He's a porn star's porn star. Yeah. Well done, man. Like all those following. indie bands that yeah. other bands cult follow. Following. Cult yeah. following. Yeah. He had a cult following. <laughs> but all right. But now, here now we're getting back to a fundamental problem. <laughs> What's it? What is it? What is it? Fundamental problem is a little something called competition. Yeah, the lack of it. Government does not have competition, and thus. Their windows are, hey, we'll see if we can get a guy from the DWP out to the house between eh, 8 a.m. and 10 p.m. Yeah. That's, that's what competition does. It breeds nothing. You got it. It, ble- it breeds flab underneath your arms. You have a business. You know what it's like. You can't charge 50 bucks for a bottle of Pinot Noir if everyone else is charging 19 bucks. You got it. You're out of business. But – Imagine how your attitude would change if you were the only guy who could sell wine in Napa. No, you got and it. And that's where the attitude comes in. I agree with you. And that's, I mean, you're 100% right. And, and so you got these monopolies, government. Yeah. And there's no damn place to go. Right. And so at least we can put some uh, sunshine and light a day on it. And here's some examples I have in my book. You know, you've got Yelp, for example, that complain about restaurants and, and coffee stores or whatever. And we out there, we're out there rating those things. Right. But why don't we have Yelp for government services? And start rating your DMV, comparing and contrasting the DMV in your city. They got a D- DMV. They, they, they'd be delighted. They'd be they'd be bragging that they got an F. Yeah, to well, the, the other DMV. You, okay, so your DMV that you have to use is the worst DMV in North but, America. But there's no mechanism Good. now. What are you going to do? There's no mechanism to even expose it. When you expose it. When you at yes. least put a light a day, then people are apt to change their behavior. When there's no sunshine, sunlight, people are going to continue to do what they've done. So at least you expose the problem in a way you can objectify and measure the success or efficacy of a particular program. So those are kinds of things we can start doing in government to at least create a framework of some competition. You can incentivize good behavior as well. Here's the irony. You're going to love this because it just reinforces right. your damn frustration and stress. You know, when I was mayor of San Francisco, and as you know, I'm a pretty progressive Democrat, and I'm a, I, I'm, I support labor. But there was a labor provision, a labor contract that said performance reviews, performance reviews, and disciplinary records cannot be considered with regard to promotion. Right. So it what doesn't matter. Do you want to? You look can't at. even make that up, right? Right. So I fought almost three years to get that out of the contract because of what a demoralizing thing it is. Because you got a lot of folks, good folks in government, that are trapped in a terrible system. And the only way you get fired is not by not doing your job well, but by trying to do someone else's job and working out of your job description. And I'm not kidding you. If you start doing things out of your job description, sure. that's when there's real consequence. No, so go, those are things that's got to change. Go be on a you know union movie set and go try to move that van that's blocking the thing. And if a Teamster ain't moving it for you, you're going to... Yeah, Get shit can. Well, I'm a, I'm all for teamsters. I'm all for for collective bargaining. I really am, and and, I, and I'm all for people coming together and, and and at least having a collective voice to influence their voice. But I do completely agree with you. Got to be more flexibility. Got to create a framework of some competition, and we've got to open government up to the kind of transparency that exists in the private sector as it relates to that customer interaction. You don't, as you said, you do not exist unless you adapt in the real world. You don't exist by just complaining about Walmart moving in downtown and taking your little business out. You've got to do something about it. In government, we're not worried about that competition because you make the point. We don't have it. Yeah, well, Department of Building and Safety can have all the attitude they want because where are you going? 
can't you go, can't go grab another permit from one of your buddies, and they act accordingly. And I've had it happen on you know numerous occasions. Uh, again, all you have to do, I tell people all the time, look, you, here's how you will learn to hate the government. I, <laughs> Try to build something on your own property. Listen to this podcast. Or try to start your own business. <laughs> no, listen, no, we're going to change this it. podcast. I'm here to change How it. We, Citizenville's about changing it, I, reinventing listen, it. I, I'm I, not giving I, up on it. I, I, I want to shed some light on those cockroaches over there at the Department of Building Safety. You really do. You, you got a lot of animus stored up well, all I'll those years what, at I'll, building I'll, inspector. I'll tell you what they do. I'll tell you what they do. <laughs> I, my latest, my last project. You go in, you have to get permits, you have to, and then you have to go to plan check. And you go to plan check, and they review your plans, and then they, look over, they go over them with a pubic lice comb, and they look at it, and then they go, all right, and then they stamp it, and then they give it back to you. And then you build according to the plans that they did. And by the way, you have to over-engineer everything. You over-engineer insane. It's California. They don't care how much you pay for anything. Hey, we're an earthquake country. Hey, we need caissons that go 14 feet into bedrock, and we need all these uh, you know, shear walls, shear anchors, and we need grade beams, and we need all this. By the way, I can take you to a bunch of houses in Pasadena that haven't been touched in 100 years. Yeah. There's a little bit of that existing stock. What, what, I got it. All right, earthquake country. I hear you, man. Okay, yeah, but, but trying to thing require. Is I don't feel like anything that's been that's new that's built is really great quality either. I got to go. Well, the point is, is why does the <laughs> garage I'm building onto my house from the 20s need to be? 2,000 times stronger than the house itself. Well, what about just have, 10 times? Yeah, at least you'll have a shelter when the rest of the house collapses. Then, oh, that's How where I'm going. That? That's Hitler's bunker. Uh, everyone, <laughs> come on down. And then, they don't hire, you don't hire inspectors. They don't have inspectors come down. You hire deputy inspectors. These guys come down at 150 bucks an hour. They sit in their pickup truck. They eat Carl's Jr. for two hours. They watch a guy <laughs> weld. And then they leave and charge you for eight hours. These deputy inspectors, oh, they're gougers, man. man. They're all they're all <laughs> sucking off the same teat. They gouge you. The city says you pay us yep. for these permits. Yep. You pay us for the right to do this. Yep. And then we're not sending inspectors over. You hire deputy inspectors at your own expense. We're not even going to bother sending you our love guys government, over. Don't you? you just if love they it. weren't rapists, <laughs> if they weren't hacks, if they weren't if they weren't squeezing you every the problem is, ounce of it's, money, Adam, it's not the people. The vast majority of folks are good and want to do the right thing. I'm, I mean that. Oh but yeah, they're trapped in a. Of course. Fill in the blank system, man. Right. And so that's they don't what's got to change. You got to, ch- I mean, Obama, when he ran for president, you may recall, said, we can't just change the players. You got to change the game. We've got to change the game. We've got to change the system of government and the system of incentives because there's incentives for bad behavior. I mean, hell, you know this. Look at Congress right now. Three to one head lice is favored over Congress. <laughs> Two to one replacement NFL referees are still favored over Congress, yet we continue to reelect them over and over and over again. We incent nuts. bad behavior. We've got to change the incentives. I, listen, I'm, I'm with you. I had this uh, – uh, okay. <laughs> i got to get you out of the contracting business. It involves fire. This is the bane of your burden. All right. Well, like, contracting. It, it takes something like Tough. this. You take uh, Seth MacFarlane. He was uh, criticized by two female California lawmakers. Which ones? I missed that. Bonnie Lowenthal. Bonnie, Lowenthal. Oh, Bonnie did? Yeah. She sounds like a party. And Senator Hannah Beth Jackson. Oh, I know them both well. And they wrote a letter to the president of the academy. What would they say? Uh, well, they uh, part of the uh, women's caucus. They, uh, they, uh, it's unacceptable for what. Basically, what he did was unacceptable, and McFarlane, it was misogynistic, it was degrading, his monologue was degrading against women and actresses, and uh, they basically asked the Academy that McFarlane's behavior, uh, he'd be, he basically... Never, never be a, being able to host again. Yeah, but he's, he, he, wanted, he, he preempted want, that by saying, "I'm never going to host yeah. again." Right. They want the academy to commit to using better judgment in their future choices of content and hosts. All right, now can these bitches get back to work <laughs> on something we give a shit about? Are they? Are they? Are they, no, are they, I mean, are they doing this people, on their own time, or am I paying no, them? No, a lot of people are offended, so they're representing oh, that stress. Shut Everyone up. has the right to oh, their they opinion. Don't care. They have the right to their opinion, just like Seth has the right to do what he but did. But they're doing Everyone it. Everyone has the right to complain. It's beautiful. We're paying them. This country to craft Let's this. criticize. This craft. I'm paying them to craft this piece of seconds. shit. Someone probably wrote oh, it for them, and it's then they submitted it. No, it. They have staff for that. Uh, they have staff. Gavin, yeah, tomorrow at the coffee maker. <laughs> hey, 
Hey. I've got to work with these folks. Well, and the you good know, news we, is they don't work. Hey, so, by the way, my wife, you get, see, you're talking to the wrong guy. My wife has a documentary called Misrepresentation about the misrepresentation of women in media and in politics. And she was up for an Academy Award as a really? producer for The Invisible War. So I was down there at the Academy Awards. Uh, it, that was about rape in the military and sexual assault. They won the Spirit Awards the day before, uh, came up short on the documentary side, but nominated nonetheless. So there is some sensitivity on these things. And by the way, I, I thought Seth did a great job. I enjoyed it. And the ratings prove that a lot of folks believe that because those ratings have been tanking for years and it actually went back sure. up. Sure. What did your wife what did your wife think it's of it? It's interesting. I sat next to her. She I mean she was offended, but it was she saw it contextually. Right? I mean it was you know, I mean it's humor. And mm-hmm. you know, some people are more offended than others. I get it. But she you know it's interesting. I because she's out there looking at Super Bowl ads and she's protesting them online. She's got this you know don't buy it campaign. And it's interesting she didn't have that same reaction that the two electeds you just mentioned had. They didn't either. They just, they're just they just <laughs> grandstanding. They uh, want to get their names out there. Politicians don't grandstand. What are you talking about? Where did right. that come from? Gavin, I'm <laughs> going to gonna lay – I was going to call this idea a million-dollar idea. What is you. it? But it's this, only a million? No. This is billions All right, over now the you're talking. Now I'm paying attention. All right. I have been complaining a couple things. California. You complaining. I just don't LA. understand it. The if same. you listen, we'll solve these problems together. <laughs> All right. You ready? What is it? All right, L.A., horrible problem with traffic, as you, as, you, as you know. <laughs> It'd be, uh, we could alleviate a lot of it. Oh, uh, well, what? But we're stupid. What? L.A. is one of the dumbest cities in America. <laughs> well, every other city has a bunch of signs posted along the freeway that basically says, if you can steer it, clear it. Meaning, if you get in a little fender bender, pull over. Hey, if your car's on fire, fine, go ahead and climb out of it. But if you just traded a little <laughs> bit of paint... And a little bit of the plastic on your Prius is scuffed. Don't get out and go all CSI on us and block off the number three lane. Pull it off to the side of the, you're blocking the freeway. I get you. Pull it off. All right. All the other states do it. L.A. and La- huh. and California, with some of the worst traffic in the world, doesn't have a policy that Idaho thought of. Is that right? This can't be the first time you've heard this. Well, not specifically this. I, I just I saw a billboard out on the 405 says you're not stuck in traffic. And you're thinking, how the hell, what does that mean? It says you are traffic, which I kind of like, which sort of made the point wow. about our own behavior. That Powerful. said, uh, that said, you know, I hate the, the block in the box stuff, which we don't enforce right. enough, but we've got rules on that. So it's one thing to have these rules. It's another to enforce them. But I was not aware that places like Idaho have specific now, legislation. The, like. find, and people just re- Educate people me. People would, I like this. All right, I'm going to keep going. Good. 40-something other states do the pull over. Well, why don't we do a, it? We're dumb. Why are you petitioning <laughs> government We're to so, do this? Well, why are you he's engaging? He's talking to you. We have our mayor. Yeah. Our mayor of Los Angeles. Well, you got a new mayor's race. You should have had a debate around this. We're stupid, You've got a mayor's race next week. They'll turn it Around. We are some of the You'll dumbest. Have a runoff. We are the. We are. You know, Why don't you have a mayor's like, debate here? I, I shall. You should get them both in the room in the runoff. I, I'll tell. I'll tell you what's going on. <laughs> I'll tell you what's going on. We are a hot blonde that's in her forties and past her prime. It's oh, been geez. getting back. We're getting by on our looks. We got an ocean. We got mountains. We got Malibu, yeah. and we know it. So we're lazy we're and like, we're stupid. Yeah, we're the we are the aging high school quarterback that's still talking about the good old days. Yeah. I agree with and you. And we're not working very hard. We had it too good for too many years. We're stupid. We'll come up with the list of cities that have adopted this brand new idea. I'm introducing to Gavin Newsom. I know. Well, though, they, you know, I'm a Northern Californian. I mean, everything works perfectly up there. All right. Then we, we don't have, have traffic. Uh, we have, Bay for Area. instance, it's <laughs> legal to turn right on a red. Yet I had to honk at someone about an hour ago when I was driving yeah, in. Two just turn don't right. do the rolling right. Nobody, But nobody knows it's legal to turn right on a red. There's no campaign of awareness okay. for that. There should be. That I know. Well, well this Hello? is the, the, where's your thinking of Where this are stuff? these candidates for mayor? Well, let's, where's let's, our uh, mayor? We've had a mayor well, for he's, uh, you know, years. He's on TV. <laughs> he's on TV. That's right. No, I told you he's a friend. I got, I'm with oh, an L.A. Times reporter either, now. i got to scratch that. He's either, I didn't say that. He's either on TV <laughs> or on someone who is on TV oh, later on that that's night. Mean. He's doing a wonderful job. He's that's doing the mean. Lord's work. Okay. He's a friend. My uh, gosh, man. Unbelievable. He's a friend. Unbelievable. <laughs> he's he is. A friend. What do you guys talk about? How stupid he is? Uh, no, no. He's a friend. He's not. I mean, Antonio's it, it's amazing political career that guy's had. Oh, sure. Remarkable you, oh, well, you changed your name. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> oh, you could have it, too. I'm glad I won mayor down here. I can imagine what you'd be saying about me. Oh, if, he, if he just failed the bar six times, how much, <laughs> what kind of career he could hey, have. You try, you, right. I mean, I could, I, you ever tried to, uh, the bar, that's not easy. No, no, here's the thing. 
I couldn't pass the bar. Yeah. But I'm smart enough to know I'm stupid. <laughs> He's he's so arrogant. He doesn't know he's dumb. He took it four times and still he thinks he could pass it. I didn't know he took it yeah. four times. No, no, he failed it four times. Yeah, and yeah. and he, he didn't pass it the fifth time. He didn't take it a fifth time. <laughs> That's who's running the city, everybody. It's all, all good. Right, so it's all good. No right hand turns. So there's no awareness campaign that it's legal to turn right on a red, which would alleviate tons of traffic in Los Angeles and in California. There's no. If you can clear it, you can steer it, clear it. That doesn't exist. And we do nothing to inform the citizens of this. Now, we have tons of campaigns like Click It or Ticket. Yeah. I know You don't like that? Explain to me, <laughs> explain to me why it's necessary. I just, it's, you know what? I, do you I, think I, it's necessary? I can't even go back to the origins of it. Oh, it's I a good can. point. What I can is go it? back to it. You're passionate about this. This is good. I'm passionate about not wasting everyone's time and money. <laughs> in 19- what were, when, when, when was that law established? In 1976. All right. I was two cars years Cars that were built. Every car that was built came with a placard that lit up and a chime that went off. Try to get in your car and try not to click your seatbelt and see if there's not a buzzer going off. Yes. So if we have a buzzer going off inside of the car, yes. why the electronic campaign outside of the car? Uh, legitimate. Why didn't you run for mayor? 90. I mean, why? You seriously, 90, it's time for you to put your name on the ballot. 96.6% of people in California wear their seatbelt. Yeah, it's good. Do we still need the campaign? Well, it's, I mean, for the four, three and a half or so percent, so, Let's yes. just say everyone graduates. We believe in, you know, 100% uh, compliance. Uh, uh, no. Save if, lives. If everyone graduated, if virtually everyone graduated from high school, we wouldn't need a big but campaign it, about graduating high school. So the fear is if school. you stop the campaign, then those stats drop significantly. They can't. We it's forget. built into every car. You can't forget. You can't drive your car. <laughs> Are there a few exceptions? No. Is there not one car that doesn't have that, that Cars that, that were built thing? pre-1976. Not one comes out. There's not one. The Gremlin. There you go. From See, 1974. What about all those gremlin no, drivers? Look, it's stupid. We're stupid. We're stupid, Gavin. What are we doing? You got to run for office. You got to stop complaining. I'm not stupid Step enough in. to run for office. Why not? I'm not you dumb. could change things. I would get Vera Ghost to hit me in the head with a snow shovel. And, Maybe I'd get down to his level. But at least Antonio stepped in. You know, he could sit there complaining. He stepped in. He stepped, in. He's he stepped into a Telemundo hard. reporter. He's working, <laughs> he's working hard. He's, he's, he's working he's hard. He's doing his best. He's, oh, <laughs> that's the scary part. He did his <laughs> best when he's trying. To pass the bar. He's he doing his best. He's an idiot. Mayor. Look, people of LA show, want him. From, show me a picture, <laughs> Mike. I, every time I drive home, I drive home down Forest Lawn Boulevard or Forest Lawn Drive. There's illegals selling flowers. There's a big mess, a big pile. There's this whole underground culture. Everyone's selling. There's a pile of garbage, by the way. Those are all the flower yeah. boxes they use. That's not good. And then I can show you a picture of the guys selling the flowers illegally. By the way, it's not going into the tax mo- It's not not going in the coffers of the state. They just sell it illegally. And then I can show you a picture of a highway patrolman, a California highway patrolman, giving out a chicken shit ticket for rolling through a right Rolling there. Oh, there he is. Now, just beyond him is all the illegals doing their illegal business. But uh, what are we focusing on, Gavin? Well, you We're know, focusing on the guy who didn't come to a complete stop. We should off the bring him. I, I have a CHP officer with me. You should bring him in. We could bring talk him about in. This. <laughs> we could talk. Look, I mean, look, that poor, poor guy in the corner selling something that people apparently want. Uh, that those flowers. I mean, I, you know, I'm doesn't a want it. The guy doesn't want it. I'm the guy who owns the flower store. A mile away, uh, who's that. being undercut. Well, there's competition, but, so, you know, it's making those flower stores right, so more aggressive. You sell wine over you here, but we got, a, we got a Mexican who makes his own wine. He's going to stand down the street uh, from your you wine know, store. I admire the small business person, the entrepreneur, gets up, tries to sell a thing or two, and wants to make a difference. No. He feed their family, <laughs> working hard. To... At least those guys are out there working hard. Oh, listen. Right, here's not... Joe from the you know, CHP. Who else is working hard? He the CHP is things. working hard. Look, here's a, here's a living, breathing Member of the California Highway Patrol. Show first off, bigger criminal, illegal alien, or somebody rolls through a four-way stop sign in a in a in a uh, soccer Be careful, van. Joe. You're representing the good people of the CHP. I can't answer that question. <laughs> That's, That's a good be a answer. Horrible interview. That's a good answer. You have illegals selling, engage in illegal activity, and then you have people rolling through stop signs. Okay, listen. Here's the deal. <laughs> I have. Here's, here's what Joe I have. Joe's being shrewd here. I, I have a radar detector. Yes, sir. But I've renamed it. It's a rape detector. 
because I'm tired of getting raped by the CHP and by the state for going 72 miles an hour yeah, but on the you grapevine. Safe. No, they're not keeping, keeping people me safe. safe. They're not. They're not interested in safety. I mean, let Joe me, is. Let, Joe let is me tell you. Maybe Joe is. He cares let me deeply explain. about. Let me explain. Is this why safe? I got into this business? This, I get hit. I get pinged by radar when the when the CHP is coming. Well, you the should other be direction. going 75 and a 35 why? mile. I got a car. Zone. I got a car safe to 150 I mean, miles do that an hour. Safe, you know, place. Don't hide behind safety. Don't know what we're Just, about. You guys, it's about revenue. It's all about that's revenue. Not, it's about keeping people safe. It's about keeping well, people sure. And, sure and, and having behavior that's respectful of other people. Sure it is. So that we're sure making is. sure that we're not. You right. know, what about what about the families? CHP officer that's coming at me that hits me with the radar that then pulls a U turn smoking. The bandit style across the grass, across the medium, and then does the burnout. Joe, that's Joe knows happen, the move. Does does he does happen? a little fishtail, spreads a little gravel onto it, catches up to me, and tells me I wasn't. I wasn't. Is that on safely. TV or does that happen in real life, Joe? He knows yeah. what I'm talking about. Grapevine all the way down the grapevine. I rode a motorcycle, so I oh, okay. he's a motorcycle. All right, guy. Joe. Thank see, you. I don't want to get. I don't want to. I don't want to get pepper That's one sprayed. of our, our best Listen. and brightest. Yeah, hey, these guys, they care. They want. They, they get in this. They want to make a difference. Not just but about. I revenue. know they wanted to. No, no, no. They started. They honestly, some guy going 100 miles an hour, not 100. Flying by folks, even 75 and in a 55 and in, in, at night or something, it's foggy. Yeah, you want to raise the speed limit? Safe. Raise well, the speed did, limit. we did. We did, which was good. I mean, 55 is too modest, particularly on the five and elsewhere. How about the fact that the cars, from a technological standpoint, are much safer? Well, wait till we have the driverless cars and all the artificial uh, intelligence I, and sensors. I'm fine with that. I I'm know just this will be helpful. Stop with the money raising. Stop treating it's not, it's, everyone yeah. who works here like everyone who works in the state like a piggy bank no, I, and I start doing that. your job. I agree. Everybody, you know, I totally agree. But there's another side of this. I appreciate Let, the uh, Let's hear the other side. The other side is guys get into this for the right reasons. Oh, yeah. Establish and then they get, lo- they get schooled real quick. Yeah, you establish a framework of enforcement truly to keep people safe, to make sure that people are able to get to and from work without right. worrying about some lunatic. So click it or kick it is based on safety, well, even though yeah, 97% of people already wear. And as a good belt. libertarian, you want people to wear their seatbelts because if they get injured and they don't have ins- health insurance, all of a sudden right. you're paying the bill. But they're so already wearing their seatbelts. Seat so what are you talking about? No, but in, you know, in the extent that they don't, they're they ticketed. do, and they do get ticketed. And a lot of the, you can ask Joe. Tons of people don't wear the damn seatbelt, and you know what they do? They click it right under themselves so they don't have to put it around themselves, and they can avoid the technology. Right. And there's tons of tickets Listen, all the time. And so, as I think a it's libertarian, a I would I think suggest it's a that's an argument that if you don't want to wear seatbelts, not the government's job to force you to wear. No, but I think it's, you know, it's the same idea around motorcycle. Do you wear a helmet? I kind of prefer folks wearing helmets because, again, I don't want to pay for it at the emergency room. I do, too. And I agree with you on that one. But seatbelts, same thing. Uh, my wife called 911 the other day when a drunk driver ran into the side of my house and they didn't dispatch anybody. Because we don't have enough money for that guy, but we have plenty of money for the guys who are sitting around writing the chicken shit tickets with the radar guns. Yeah, I mean, it's well, a money race. Yeah, but it's the radar guns, the, what they do with the radar guns, they, they try, th- there are certain areas that they map that are particularly problematic as it relates to unfavorable driving. And so that's when the guns come up. That's when we put the yeah. signs up saying, here's how fast you're going. So there's some strategic deployment okay. as it relates to those Does guys. Does every single man hour and every single effort and every single calorie need to be spent telling people to slow down and how about five calories telling people to turn right on a red yeah. or pull your car over if you get in a fender bender how come there's no policies involving moving faster and a thousand telling you to yeah. slow down well, it's a fair point to me it's not an or it's an and not so a you're fair making point. A point it's a great point no it's good i mean what i mean by fair in this context is you make a legitimate point that should be fairly assessed in the context. You're right. We do certain things, I, but but what you're arguing for is eliminate doing certain things and do these others. I'm saying we can certainly do better and do both. You can tell people it's legal to turn right on red, and we'll find the name of those states. But that, not a uh, rolling red. You got to protect. You got to watch pedestrians. We have a ton of pedestrian fatalities when people are just rolling too hot in the red, and poor folks, particularly seniors, folks disabled, kids out there, very dangerous. So you want folks to stop. You yeah, want right. to be respectful, and you want to enforce that. And yeah. I thank God that officers there to start enforcing that near school zones and other things. Yeah, thank God. When I'm no serious. One... All right, how about this? Yes, sir. How about they just gave you the ticket when someone was stepping off the curb? Instead of when no one was well, around. We don't, in Northern California, we don't do that as aggressively as New York and uh, I know some parts of Southern mm-hmm. California. All right. That one I understand Houston a has, better. if you can steer it, clear it. Houston. Houston, Texas. And they have a learning disability. Portland. This is a picture from Portland. What's the learning disability? They're Houston. Come on. 
<laughs> yeah, the point is, is we're, sense, I got a learning disability. We're dumb. I read that about yeah, you. you know what I mean, come on. All right. Yes, Brian. Can I ask Gavin a question? Yes, yes sir. Uh, a, a lot Good, the, Brian. Thank God you jumped in. <laughs> well, it is about. Jeez, I'm getting grilled here. The uh, a lot of the that's in the news that a lot about of about um, rules that just that I wasn't even around to make. No, but you're around for this though. The, <laughs> the, a lot of productions, TV, film productions, leaving the state, leaving the state. What is, and what's, country? What's the plan for? Well, we for put that. together a couple years ago. Schwarzenegger put up a few bucks, not enough, about half a billion dollars to try to keep these runaway productions here in the state. But you make the point. It's almost every state from Louisiana, New Mexico, Michigan, notably uh, New York, not least of which, of course, foreign countries like Canada and New Zealand and others have been very aggressive. Uh, when I was mayor, I was the only city in the state of California that actually came up with local production credits out of the frustration of a lack of aggressiveness for the state. Uh, we were able, despite historic budget deficits the last few years, to keep that program going, which was a good thing. Uh, and it's beginning to have some impact, uh, but it's not enough. And I think we have to be much more aggressive because we can't afford to keep bleeding these jobs. Well, it's, it's simple. It's what most people will tell a lot of folks that won't listen, which is start raising it. People move out and then you get zero. You get greedy. And uh, I last time, four months ago, I was in Winnipeg. And uh, they said, hey, guess who's in the suite next to you? And uh, I said, who? And they said, Samuel L. Jackson. And I yep. said, Samuel L. Jackson, what the hell is he doing in Winnipeg in November? And they're like, he's shooting a movie. Yep. And I said, Samuel L. Jackson is shooting a movie in Winnipeg. And then I thought, was this, a, this is about a Mountie on the edge? Yeah, and a then I thought, whale movie. No, nope, no, nope, this movie doesn't take place in Winnipeg. And then I thought, where's Samuel L. Jackson live? Beverly Hills. Yeah. And who's the biggest mouthpiece for the Democrats? Samuel L. Jackson. Oh, we've got others, but I'm right. with He's you. He's one of the biggest ones. <laughs> but who's more than happy to jump on an airplane and go to Winnipeg? No, well, I mean, that's where the production is. That's where yeah, it's Why is there a production? What do you mean the, that's where the production is? The, the thing's supposed to take place. Because the tax incentive. Takes in Chicago. Well, the, well the production just isn't there. Hey, let me you, give you an example. You drove it there. I'm with you. No, hey, hold on. I was the guy that got rent to be filmed in San Francisco, not in New York, because we came up with some aggressive strategies Good. to keep And I don't there. mean you. I just yeah. mean a lot of jackasses well, in your party drove it there. Yeah, I'm both. Parties. Right. Both parties. Republicans, by the way, were ones originally blocking some of those tax credits to Hollywood, uh, quote unquote, right? For obvious reasons, they thought that was aiding and abetting the liberal progressive elite. So, all right, it's well, they're both, both, parties. They're both, both idiots. Parties. But either way, <laughs> let's just use common sense and math. You charge too much, you get greedy, people move to Texas. That's how it yeah, works. Yeah, but then they come back. Well, look, I like who a, wants to be in Texas in the summer? Like again, I. Uh, I've been you want to be in Houston in, no. in the middle you, of you August? Don't be, you don't be in Houston on the best day Houston has. Uh, Austin I, ain't bad. Somebody, yeah, ain't somebody bad. sent me um, something that KCT did, and as a little expose that they did, we chopped it up in a I don't know two two and a half minute soundbite. But it is the problem, and it's the problem in a nutshell. And I want to know, and I, I feel like you're one of the good ones, Gavin. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> Don't you should see how he treats it certainly the bad feels ones. like it. <laughs> I just want to clear this stuff up. So uh, his welcoming tone goes right away. When unbelievable! The bad ones come I, I like you, Gavin. I really God do. Bless you, You're man. businessman, God and I. And, and so this is the problem, though. If you want to know, we're talking about the mayoral race, and you said bring both of them in here. Well, well the runoff. I'm assuming a runoff. You'll find that both of them are both in the pockets of the unions. <laughs> but here we go. It is known as the Deferred Retirement Option Plan, or DROP. As we first reported two years ago, DROP allows LAPD and LA City fire personnel who have been on the force for at least 25 years and are 50 years old to collect both a salary and their pension at the same time for the last five years on the job. Here's how it works. Officer Jones retires January 30th, 2013. The very next day, he comes back the to work. The next day. Now Jones continues to be paid his salary, but his pension goes into an account where it collects 5% interest. They're all heroes. Jones and the city still contribute towards his pension. When Jones leaves his job, he gets those accumulated pension checks plus 5% interest. No one gets Since 5% inception, anymore. Since 3,407 officers have entered drop. Some are getting supersized checks as they walk out the door. This police commander got $800,000. This deputy fire chief, 939000 And since our first report two years ago, a few drop members hit the million-dollar mark, walking away with seven-figure checks. Huh. Wonder why we're broke. <laughs> These guys are heroes. 
None of us have this in the private sector, by the way, but these guys are heroes. But uh, go ahead and let's see see how we're going to fix this, because I know our new mayor, oh, they're going to get, you can see, see if our new mayors are, are, are going to fix this one for us. Angering police and fire unions while in campaign mode is the last thing most of these candidates want to do, especially Wendy Gruel, who won endorsements by the police and fire unions. What? I've supported DROP. It is huh? an effective way what? to keep some of our best officers um, and firefighters in the city of Los Angeles. You don't see DROP as a double dip? I, I don't see DROP as a double dip. They're earning money at the same time they're collecting their pension. Yeah. Well, it's been, a, again, a program that has been effective to keep our officers here and keep them working in the city of Los Angeles. Mayoral candidate Eric yeah. Garcetti oh. also likes DROP. Wonder who the he study wants the study showed from. that that is a money saver, plus it gets the most valuable people to stay on the job for a few more years. In fact, as we've learned, there is no study showing DROP is a money saver because nobody has bothered to study it. But that's something candidate Jan Perry promises to do, even though she didn't do it as a council member. What? As mayor... I will immediately uh, move forward along with the CAO to do a very straightforward analysis of the DROP program. The mayoral candidates running on their political outsider status also weighed in. And I think that, you know, DROP is just one minor program. It's whether it exists or not doesn't impact our pension fund liabilities that much at all. Yeah, I so think why do that it? it is, um, uh, it's... Uh, a program that has to be done away with Kevin James uh, currently because of the uh, just the the obligations that we face all right so there's politics everybody it's costing <laughs> us a ton of money we're getting we're making sure the guys are rich who don't need to be rich and who they are unions and you need their backing to get voted into office. So why would you cut anything that affected them negatively or you'll not get their endorsement? Thus, you're in bed with them. And don't give me that bullshit where it's like, hey, once I get voted in by these guys and once I once I get in bed with these guys, I have no obligation to them. Really? I'm, I'm unclear. So what is the argument for it? Well, I, you know, I don't know, the, and, and I mean this sincerely. I'm not a mayoral candidate down here in Southern no, California. No, no, this is for everybody. So, this, no, goes, I, I this is not well, just on the mayoral there's, level. There's, this there's, is all there's, politics. There's, oh, yeah. Well, that, the more generic we can talk about. But the drop programs that do exist have different variations. There's different themes on drops. There's some that, that are initiated through collective bargaining, others that are voted on by voters, and it depends on cities large. I don't, I'm not familiar enough most with LA specific have, examples. Most cities have done away with them because they're so expensive. And we have not done away with them because but, but has in this general, been a big issue argument... in the mayor's race down here? I no, what people the listen, race. here's the thing. We don't know what's going on. All we know is we don't have any money. Right. And this is part of the reason we don't have any money is because everyone is mobbed up with the unions. That's why we don't have money. And guys like Via Ragosa have turned a blind eye to it right. because he's in with the unions. Right. So we have a problem. How can you get somebody in office who's not mobbed up with the unions? It's a fundamental problem. Well, there oh. yeah, no, go go ahead. Ahead. no, there are a lot of folks that, that are absolutely proactively – engaged and supported by unions and it's a two-way street. There are others that are a little more independently minded. Let me just bring it back to the state of California. To Governor Brown's credit, he's engaged unions in a respectful and thoughtful manner through a collective bargaining process to advance pension reform, to deal with some of these issues of spiking and some of the abuses that I imagine drive you and some others crazy. But well, he's done just it those in of an us who like money and have to, those of us who are tired of paying way too much in taxes and having it turned on us. Yeah. Hey, we're the problem? The no. people that are paying for everything are the problem. No, hardly. Big business is the problem. Yeah, no. I, I think you know. I think the approach that the governor has advanced is a thoughtful one, and he acknowledges we need to go much further. But he made a first round effort. A lot of folks didn't expect Democrats could do that for the reasons you state. Democrats supported those new pension reforms as a first phase example of what we need to do to begin to address the cost curve, but more importantly, those abuses. When I was mayor, I did two rounds of pension reform going back six years before anyone was even focused oh, on some of these issues. Had to be the dealing worst. with spiking, dealing with the top salary for retirement and blending it in the top few years. But again, we did it in a less adversarial way then we're engaging in the conversation in a more collaborative way. And I think you can do that effectively. So you can be supportive yeah. and supported in a way where you're not completely blind to right. thoughtful engagement. But who, who are the unions going to throw their considerable weight behind? 
the person, Kevin James, that's telling them this has to end, this no, raping of the citizens not. has to end, no. or the one that goes, I, uh, we need to look into this because I More think likely. it's pretty. Right. right. I would suggest that's accurate. That's what we call and, government in action, well, people. Then, then you, you hold them accountable, as you say, when uh, they're in office, to, to yeah. doing <laughs> their job effectively. <laughs> she'll, 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 I know. You she'll, love politics. It's going to be awesome. No wonder we're in, we're in the teens <laughs> All right, in listen, support. You I just admit, admit what these guys are. Why don't you run for are? office? I mean, I, if I'm not dumb gonna, enough. I'm not I know, dumb but enough would, But someone's got to be dumb enough. All right. You don't want dumb people. We have a mayor. You don't want dumb people. No. Antonio, by the way, to his credit, has been working on a lot of these same pension reforms as well. Obviously, he's doing a fantastic job because this is I'm now the biggest defender of your mayor. I didn't know I was, you know. This program, by the way, was supposed to sunset. Antonio should call me and thank me for this conversation. They renewed it. He doesn't know how to use a telephone. Antonio call in. He doesn't know how to use a telephone. Unbelievable. The numbers confuse him. Oh, that's not right. Now, listen. Jeez. Listen, I'm a fan of Gavin Newsom. (laughs) What what is next for you politically? Where are we going? After this, if if I'm dumb enough to stay in this, I mean, you got to, you know, you got to attack me. I got to get the hell out of this. Well, I like, I, you know, we can go back to Napa, sell a few books, yeah, open no, some. Yeah, uh, right. I got the book. Drink a little you know, I got, a, by the way, a book to begin to solve these problems. You'll like my book. I will. It's about individual liberty, self government. I it's like it. It's about being more efficient, responsive, effective. It's about not having government do things to you, as you describe, but doing things with you. It's, it's called about Citizenville, by the way, and it's available on Amazon as we speak. But, uh, Gavin, all right, I won't grill you anymore. But what's next? <laughs> what, what? I mean, you're good looking. You're young. Early. Everyone. I was you. young you until were young. I, when I started the show. I was young. <laughs> I asked the tough age, question. How long is it? I've been, literally, I'm up to 13 years. Listen, already. I like just asked the here. questions. <laughs> that Unbelievable. I'm thinking. <laughs> All right. I'm going to run the Antonio Viragosa campaign oh, for governor. God. Oh my God. As his God. spokesperson now. I'm his oh, chief protector. Oh, my God. He's going to run for governor. He's going to run, oh. right? Well, I don't know. Maybe he doesn't run. I don't know. He's running for president or something. It's going to be so sad. Someone said that. Someone right. said he's running for vice president. I'm, Hillary Clinton's vice. Someone did tell oh, me wow. that may happen. Who do you or think? Or a cabinet secretary. Who do you, who do you think is going to run? Let's just, let's just talk presidential. It's so far off. But any, any, Jeb any, Bush any, is my biggest concern as a Democrat, mm-hmm. and that's a compliment. Right. Uh, I'm not so convinced about Rubio yet. Though I'm impressed by aspects, Ruby, I think uh, Christie is an admirable character in politics and a man of some conviction. I don't agree with a lot of things he's done, but I admire his independence. Um, and so I think he's formidable as well. But if Hillary Clinton runs, I'm just convinced. And based on what I believe today, all things being equal, she clears out the Democratic primary field and overwhelmingly is the favor uh, in the general election in 16. Really? Absolutely. Even if, let's say, Obama... And that'll be eight years of having a Democratic president doesn't get the economy and things back where we Hillary's want Hillary's transcended that now. She's so popular with independents, even now increasingly Republicans. People see her uh, as a little bit more fiscally moderate. The Clinton, the old DLC Clinton, remember, uh, we believe putting people first, more opportunity, less bureaucracy. Mm-hmm. He talked in those Jeffersonian terms of self-government and individual mm-hmm. liberty. Talk about the TV show? Yeah, the TV show. <laughs> Can, Weezy! Weezy! <laughs> she had to cut this deficit. <laughs> so she pulls out of that up. And, mm-hmm. and the Clinton years, right, where we had budget, no budget deficits, where the economy was humming along. Sure. She could pick back up on all of that. I like that. And she's been above the fray as Secretary of State. And most people outside of some extreme folks on Fox I think she's done a decent job as Secretary. I think, I think she's done an outstanding job. So I think she's formal. And if you're, if you're Cuomo from New York or – Guys like Martin O'Malley uh, in Maryland who want to run for president, I don't see them running in a field mm-hmm. with Hillary Clinton. I think she knocks them all out. You'll have a few stragglers, but folks, I don't think will be particularly viable. Well, there also we'll <clears throat> there also was this thing that took place when uh, Obama during his first first term and first election. We kind of liked the idea that we we're going to vote the first African American president in the United States. Like it felt kind of cool. I think to most people, even people Absolutely. that normally weren't engaged, we went, "Hey, we're pretty progressive. We're not so bad." So if there's a difference of a couple percentage points, but that difference is, hey, we have the first female president, and again, that makes us a it's little big. cooler and a little more progressive. I think people we're kind of in that mode now. Of, hey, let's. You ain't kidding. It's. Been, I mean, and that's why it's formal. But think about it. Republicans have lost five out of the last six presidential campaigns in popular vote. Right. So even though Bush won that first race, still lost that popular vote, regardless of the 
Supreme Court. Yeah, they're not. So yeah. five out of six. These guys are going to have to recalibrate. There's something. And, and the dem- demographics are just not in their favor. And they're recognizing no, people that are getting on immigration dumb. and everything else. Yeah, people are fat and dumb. I, I agree. <laughs> and lazy, you're part of those sorry. 40. You, you're no, like people, the Romney 40, no, you know, people the tankers. Have, yeah, they have entitlement. Uh, yeah, entitlement, entitlement. And dumb, hey, the and poor bloke that you know, was working 20 years and now is out of work and is getting a little unemployment. He's hardly a taker. Right. In the worst recession since the Great Depression. Who do you know? Who do you know? I mean, I'm a little more sensitive. Who do you know who's really good at their job that's out of work? A lot of folks. That are really good at their yeah, job. Yeah, there's 1.8 million Californians. That are you, good at their are job? Are you telling me? I don't know anybody who's good. One, that is what he's telling you. you that's what I'm you telling you. You really think of 1.8 million people, everybody, there's not one that's everybody, qualified every, to be right, at work? I'll tell you what. Everybody, everybody, not one. Everyone close their eyes <laughs> and think about the smartest, sharpest, hardest working dudes they know and see if they have a gig or not. We're all thinking of ourselves, right? Sound effects guy. Uh, yeah. no, no. 1.8 no, million no, that are actively seeking. No, there's, can't find there's 72 of those guys But imagine that are you're living in Imperial County. Ca- but, but let's be honest here. You're living in Imperial County. Ca- Let me give you a legit scenario. All right. You're living in Imperial County, 25.5% unemployment. Mm-hmm. You got a house that you bought that's now underwater by 70 grand. You can't afford to move out to the coast where a lot of the jobs are. You're stuck. Those manufacturing jobs are gone, the globalization of the economy, et cetera, and you're actively trying to find work, but you're competing with seven or eight damn people every six months when a job opening comes up. You're telling me not one person's qualified for no, a job I'm, out there? I'm saying – I'm not saying they're qualified. I'm saying the smartest, hardest working people I know are never out of a job, and not ever, all these guys are geniuses, and a lot of them didn't do a good job of looking down the road. You know, they go, hey, man, I worked at the Flint, Michigan factory making 38 bucks an hour in golden time on holidays, and now it's shut down and moved to Mexico, and all I'm qualified to do is work at McDonald's. Well, you should have thought about that. Yeah, I mean, I, I And you should have socked away a couple of dollars, too, while yeah. you were making way more than you deserve. And by the way, if you're only qualified to work at McDonald's, maybe that's what you're worth. 1.7 million folks do. I, I used to be. I used Were to, you one of them? I was one of them. What do you think? I, so you must love raising the minimum wage. No, I don't. I it, must drive you crazy. Well, here's. I don't mind. I don't have my feeling with the minimum wage is I don't have real strong feelings. Like I, you know, I know guys on the right are like you're hurting the people you're trying to help, right. and the right and the people on the left are like it should be called a living wage, not a minimum wage, and all that. And that is like nine bucks an hour, seven bucks an hour. It doesn't really matter. Right. My point is this: is when Obama gets up there. And start stumping about you have two kids and you're only making fourteen thousand dollars a year. My answer is, why do you have two kids for? You're making minimum wage. Well, you maybe have you two had kids? twins. You wanted one. And, you know, I mean, you know, why do you want one? Fate. You're making minimum wage. Maybe you had. Don't have. Maybe you kids. had a, a better job and the factory shut down and you're taking the minimum wage and you had the kids seven years prior. There's, and you, circumstantially, you're in a tough bind. You can, I mean, there's real people. You know, there's real I, examples. There's, there's like five that. people on the planet uh, have that situation. <laughs> oh, Most people should not be having kids if they're working minimum wage jobs. Do you agree with that? Yeah, well, I mean, if, if, if that's what they set their sights to do exclusively in their life is to work minimum wage jobs, it would be very difficult. But in a free society yes. where you don't want interference of government, they have every right to make whatever decision they feel is right. appropriate uh, in their life. They don't want interference of government, but they want free lunches after they shit out the kids. Well, it That's the, the government. Yeah, the poor kid, though, is sitting there. Oh, trying, well, now they do want do the, the government. No, well, wait. I the thought kid, they didn't want the government. What are you going to do with that poor kid? You don't want that poor kid out in the streets and sidewalks panhandling five years later or committing crimes. You want to take care of that poor bloke. That's it's right. not his fault or her fault. It's a parent's no. fault. All right. Feed so him and sterilize him. I agree with you. No, that's just for pigeons in San Francisco. <laughs> no. You want controversy? That's controversy. Is that what you call homeless people then? No, that's not. Oh, it's, uh, hey, by the way, that was my issue, homelessness, and my passionate efforts yeah. to deal with homeless. I that's an issue that no one cares about in yeah. this country. I care deeply. Well, listen, I, 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 the thing about homeless people is they're either junkies or they're crazy or they're both. This notion of, like, the guy's a hardworking, God-fearing family member who lost his job and now had to take to the streets is total and utter yeah, bullshit. Yeah, but what about the picture of real fa- homelessness, which is a poor mom with two kids with a husband who took off and left her, who's sitting there struggling on that minimum wage job, and all of a sudden now is out in the streets and sidewalks desperately trying to find some help, get her life back, can't get those kids into childcare. I think that's what happened to Jewel. Can't afford them. That's, that's the tough that's, thing. Yeah, that's and tough. And that's a picture of family homelessness that's, in this that's, country. That, no, that's, that's a postage stamp. No, the, the real 
picture is bigger than the AIDS quilt, and those are crazy junkies. Yeah, but no. So what? No, see, I will challenge you on this. This, you know, what you're talking about is chronic homeless, which is the picture we have of homeless, which is right. a relatively small percentage of the folks that are homeless. And those folks certainly are struggling with drug or alcohol addictions, duly diagnosed with bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, now self-medicating with drugs and alcohol and the like. They got vocational issues, physical issues, etc. And those folks should be treated as separate category. And I don't disagree with that. But the vast majority of homeless are not in that category. They're bunked up with family and friends. Uh, there are three or four folks living in an SRO unit. I've seen it where an entire room is just a mattress, and people are literally doing shifts, and folks are working hard. They may be out in that street corner selling those flowers, but damn it, at least they're out there doing that, not waiting in line, handing for handouts on that same corner. So they're trying to make a go of it and trying to make their family uh, proud of them and give them a sense of, of dignity and self-worth. And to me, that's the American dream. Well, that's well, and I want to support that. Listen, I want to support it too, but not to the extent where it carries on into the next generation. I get your point. I want everybody to plan. Look down the road at six months. Yes, your husband lost his job. That's why you need to sock away some money when he's gainfully employed. Yes, they foreclosed on your home. That's why you need to have a network, a community, right. friends, family members, money put away. I got it, but think about Don't it, Adam, have the half, kids. Half of African Americans in the state of California, roughly half of Latino families, have no access to a checking account. Or an ATM, things we take for granted. They don't have a check. What's cash. wrong with them? And what, but what, well, because they don't they don't have the resources to sock those things away. Why do we have them? Uh, we, a lot of different reasons, but but roughly half those families don't. Where do they why end do up, Armenians have them? But where they end up is why, in check cashing places. But I want to know why those lenders, groups, why advantage. those two groups don't have access. Well, there are a lot of. It, just happens to be that we can so talk they're about flawed? this. No, they're hardly flawed, but they're struggling. Genetics are making flawed. their word hardly, not ab- absolutely. But, okay, not. so but absolutely do Asians not. have this problem? I mean, in, in a lot of communities have a lot of whites have these problems. Oh, but so I just, that's not just black and Hispanic. No, but it. But, but I'm why did you bring you, up black and Hispanic? Because the magnitude is ominous. But why so many of them? It just happens to be the just, magnitude. That's the way God planned it. Not at all. Well, it what just, happened to them? There are a lot of issues, and with it, that the communities are struggling. A lot of why new are they immigrants, struggling? A lot of, a lot of different reasons. Lack Hispanics of opportunity. Have been here. Blacks have been here longer than we've been here. Well, we we can we can surmise. What all about that. Asians? They were put in internment camps. Yeah, we in fact it all initiated out of San Francisco, and all the right. Chinese Exclusion Act came so out. So they are they the check cash? Are they the check cash? A lot of a lot of Asians certainly do. Oh, so why don't you why don't you conclude because them? The only reason why is the magnitude. Of there's the so problem, many more. The magnitude and percentage. But there's terms no way to figure out how that happened. Of Africa. We could talk about it. You know what I'm dealing with? I don't want to have a sociological debate. Uh, sure, why would you? Have, no. no, here's why. Why would you want to do that? Because the person from the Times wouldn't write good things about oh, you if God. you did that. No, no, that's not the case because I want you to deal want with to get reality. Into that. No, no, no. You want to deal with reality. I want to I deal with reality, reality of people is. that are struggling, people are suffering. I want to deal with the problems in why a pragmatic way. Why are they way. struggling I don't and want suffering? An idea. We can hold hands and surmise about all these underlying why are they, reasons. I don't want to do that. I want to know why they're struggling. Why are they struggling? A lot of folks are struggling because they can't find jobs. Why blacks and Because they're working. Why blacks and Hispanics? Across the board. all. So sure can, okay, I mean, so everybody, everybody's is. struggling. So and Asians are suffering uh, just as much as blacks. Um, the, the face of welfare is not an African American family. Oh, so, so, it's it's Asian, Jewish, it's all of them. Uh, Caucasian, it's okay, a lot of so folks in society. Struggling. A lot of folks are struggling. Okay, but a lot of folks. Are so struggling. if I go down to the check cashing place, lots of Jews and Asians. There are okay. Right. Lot of me, just just and, checking and you. Just lot, checking the math. Absolute fact. I'm but just ca- wondering why you, why you singled those two because out. Because the percentages, and I think these things matter, are profound. So why? That's my question. Well, I think there are a lot of reasons why. And <laughs> yeah. you, want, you want to go back to issues of racism? I'll do that. You want to go back to the debate we're having about the Voting Rights Act? Yeah. And the fact the Supreme Court uh-huh. wants to take away Section 5? What about five? their families? You want to t- no, but you, you want, want to talk, talk about, about their about, families? You know, but I understand that. Families are incredibly important. That's certainly part of it. Yeah, and it's people a, have it's to a be very responsible. small part of it. It's minuscule. It's a big part oh, of it. Oh, big. It is, it is a big oh, part. Oh, well, why don't you guys talk about that then if it's a big part? I just brought it up. It's a big part. It's a big part. It's a big part that you never talk about? I do talk about that. no one on your side talks this. about that big part i think president obama himself brings it up over and over yeah. again go back to his campaign speeches sure. he's given some remarkable speeches of sure. importance of fathers in the context of the african yeah. you got to be a hero struggle. you got to be a hero to raise your kid no well you certainly you have to it be takes courage. responsible it takes adult. courage to raise a kid i heard his speech adult. after it takes courage gavin I don't know about courage. You, it's what, that's it what your president him. said. No, but he, to his well, credit, let's hear, let's hear what he says. eloquent speeches. Let's hear what he says. It says, it says it takes courage. And it, we'll work to strengthen families by removing the financial deterrence 
to marriage for low-income couples and do more to encourage fatherhood. Because what makes you a man isn't the ability to conceive a child. That's right. It's having the courage to raise one. Courage. Yeah, right. I don't know if the right. The, yeah, I get yeah, your courage. point. But at least he made the point that I imagine made you the point accept that, that it's, it's easy it's to like, have one. Yes. Uh, but you've got to actually step up and be a man and actually raise one. And right. he probably used. I think that's Listen, what Gavin, ultimately. I know what saying. you're saying. No. It, it, anybody can eat at an IHOP. It takes courage to pay the bill. I don't. I, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It takes it, courage by the way, to stay there and pay that this, bill. This is – the president has spoken not at his State of the Union, as yeah. you just exampled, but he's spoken about this in much more comprehensive I know. and eloquent I, I, terms. Yeah. And I think powerfully so. Yeah. And I think principally so. The issues – This though, is his of, latest one. But we want to go the issue of race as it relates to the issues of poverty and what we yes. had in the, the in redevelopment agencies and concentration of poverty like and public housing myself. and all of these things start right. to lead to why. The answer to your question, yes. why is it concentrated why? in the African-American community? And looking at that history, one cannot exclude that reality. I just, I mean, I just think Can't that's exclude. naive to suggest – that those things don't matter when How families were Jews? broken up. How about the Jews? I, <laughs> no problems in the past? Yeah. No, of course. Every community's got well, their who's struggles. Well, had it worse? Like, even the Irish had who struggles. Who do you think had it worse? I get it. But well, what about the Jews? They seem to be, why are the Jews doing well? You know what? Why? 1967, blacks couldn't even marry whites in this country. Not 1927. In right. 16 states, they were denied because people use religious arguments right. to deny people the Jews got put in ovens and I understand, and it's disgraceful. Okay, so. And that's why, and, and, and it's completely fair game. How we are the talk Jews about doing that. now? I, I mean, <laughs> A lot of Jewish families doing well. A lot of families uh, struggling. Really? Absolutely. At the check place? Uh, sure. Okay. Every, I'll I mean, go down to the check place. Across the board, Jews. people okay. are struggling. Right, of course. Everyone's struggling I mean, look at the equally. unemployment lines. A lot they, of they Jews. includes Americans of all types, okay. all, all races, okay. all ethnicities, all, right. all sexual orientations. They're all the same. My gosh. That's right. Uh, but, you know, and we could talk about the issues <laughs> in the Latino community, again, yeah. by separating the challenge associated yeah. with English as a second language for a lot of folks. Sure. The issues of poverty yeah, and no, issues related to that. Everyone came here spoke perfect English. No, I understand that. I'm, you know, I got it. I mean, you're, I get your world, Adam, which is a, a little bit more clean cut and idealistic, a little less pragmatic no, in terms of the world. It's the wildly rest of pragmatic. It, well, they have I get a problem it. with family. They have a problem with, they don't yeah. focus on education. That, well, that who, will get them out who, of who the problem focus they're in. On education? I don't think there's any community that cares more about education than the Latino community. Wow. I don't know. I'm I'm check those test scores. No, people are, I mean, come on, that's not fair. They it's care. Not fair. Look at this school system. Look how lousy the system is. Uh, who, okay. Look how lousy the system is. The system is. sucks, I don't care who but it goes doesn't in that suck system. if you have parents that are they, together and put an bad emphasis on Caucasians, education. Bad for, they care deeply about education, care deeply about health care, oh, care deeply care about, about these options. Okay. Well, then yeah. why do some groups do so much better? <laughs> I mean, what do you mean by groups? A lot, almost everybody's struggling in some There's way, shape, or form in this There's a huge difference in, in academic performance between Asians and Hispanics, yes or no? Uh, there's certainly uh, examples within the Asian community. Yes or no? No, within the Asian community, there are examples, Chinese community in particular, other uh, members of the Asian community, South Korean, right. Koreans generally. That's right. generally true. So, okay. Why is it true? I, you know what? I'm not a sociologist. I'm not someone. Perhaps you okay. can explain why. Well, I've told you why. Why? They have a family that puts an emphasis on education. Which is a noble thing. And a lot of Latinos yes, have is. families that put emphasis lot, on education. A lot, but not enough. African Americans have put emphasis on education. A lot, but not enough. Their White families people, are Jewish broken people. up. Okay. All right, Gavin. I, I get it. You, it's, everything's the same. Not every, this, everything's the same. It's you, a human condition. You You're brought right. up Hispanic and blacks. Because the percentages are right. challenging. Because the families are broken up. Well, I, I think you the think issue why? of family is profoundly important. Thank you. And I agree with you. Okay. As I did well, you can't when we not began agree the conversation. With me. It's the number one problem they're having. Uh, I think it's among the challenges. <laughs> okay. I don't think it's the what's number the, one. What's I'm not the number one problem? That. I think there are a lot of challenges. What's the number one? I don't know. That I've not countenanced and, and right, so Gavin, organized one, two, the three, The family four, is five, not the six, number one seven, problem eight, in the nine, black ten. community. What is the number one? There are a lot of problems in the African-American uh, American uh, community. But that one's not the number one. I, one could make that argument. I, and oh, I'm not well, maybe it is number one then. I'm not here to All make right. that determination. Listen, I think there's Gavin, a lot of issues. You, uh, okay. No, I, but but I appreciate sure. your absolute conviction and certainty, and your righteousness. I know what the problem is. Versus people that you know, but apparently others. 
that have well, you points know what of it view is too. don't necessarily know. You know what it is, I don't too. know if I I'm willing to You know what it is, too, latitude. but you're not going to get Other any votes people. if you say anything. That's not why I'm Bill not Cosby saying Bill Cosby knew what it was. I just I mean— You I, ain't getting any votes now. That's not about votes for me. I didn't okay. get into this for votes. I want to do the damn right thing. I don't like these check-cashing places. I don't like the pay. I don't letters. like them either. I don't like the predatory nature of people that take advantage of poor folks. I, I don't like it either. I don't like folks talking—you know what I don't like, Adam? I don't like folks talking about some poor soul— that's here trying to take care of their family and calling them some illegal punk that should be pulled over by the CHP because they're trying to make a go selling their, their flowers. I well, care about these damn people. These are human beings. All right. But here's the deal. If you cared about them. But I don't want to use the language that incites and no, diminishes no, 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 no. human wealth. I uh, said human I don't need the CHP guys pulling over the people that are paying their taxes versus taking people that are engaged in illegal activity off the streets. That's I think, number one. I mean, number look two, at the, President Obama has incarcerated more immigrants than if, any president in history, so the facts don't support if, your assertion. If you really cared about these people, you'd focus on the real problem. Which is? Families. Families are profoundly important. Okay. And, there's your, that's and we the do care lies. about families. And All right, I, that's you know, the answer. I agree. I don't know. I wish it was that simple, it but is God that bless simple. you. I think it's absolutely critical. I agree with you. We're I'll not you denying what. that. It's simple. Father, stay at home. Raise your family. Yeah. Do your homework with your kids. Put an emphasis on education, like the Jews, like the Asians, and let's see what happens to the problem in 20 years. I just, uh, let's what see I, how many of you are in don't cash like, in place. What I don't like is then the sort of assertion within the statement. It's what you're not... To suggest that the Latino community doesn't value those same things or African... I just don't accept that. Well, they don't value it to the extent that some other groups do. No. Yeah. I you don't opinion. agree with that? Your well, opinion. I think statistics back me up. Yeah, well, I, I think it's a much more complex issue. That's no, not that I, I not complex at all. I, with respect to the discrimination, particularly seven, against African Americans, 75% in this country would bear out of, of different African, complexities. Uh, it requires, I think, a different analysis. Black kids grow up without a dad. I think it's disgraceful. Right. Yeah. And it makes some impact. It has a huge impact. A oh, huge I, like, impact. We've said that. I All agree right. with you. Well, you said, something that but makes I a may huge not impact. agree it's the number one impact. I All think right. there are well, a lot of other issues that okay. deserve your similar attention. So it, it'd be top ten? I, I, Growing up without a dad. We say that'd be top prof- ten? It's profoundly, I'll say it but again, not number one. important in people's lives. Right. But there okay. are a lot of families with kids that don't grow up with fathers. That do extraordinarily well. There are a lot of sure. commu- there's 50 plus percent divorce rates in this country, yeah. and there are a lot of folks that don't have the benefit of two ha- uh, people in their homes that still do well. Right. So it's not the exclusive well that can't be issue it. to solve all the problems. Well, maybe if they get to 80 percent, that'll help at the check cashing you know, place. Yeah, well, I, you know what the truth is, Gavin. I, I, I I'm not as certain about some things as you are certain about some things. Well. I- I just use statistics. I don't make it up. Well, nor did I make up the statistics about African American Latino community and check cashing places struggling and dealing with the predatory nature of those places. I'm with you, brother. I just want to get to the point where we don't have those places and we don't Amen. have well, we a, share the goal, a certain group lining up at those places. And I'd like to get back and figure out why those groups are at those places. I agree, but I think you should look beyond the exclusive focus. That it's just about two people in a household. I just don't know if that's that's good oh, enough. Well, there's as overwhelming as is, statistics for that. It's as important as that is. And again, I said profoundly important. Yes. I think you should give some consideration to other things that are going on. Well, let's let's put it to you this way. You want to talk some more? Everyone wants to talk about an even playing field. I tell people there's no such thing as an even playing field. Some people grow up with rich people. Some people grow up their dad's own factories they can they can work at. Some people grow up poor. I grew up poor. I don't know where you grew up somewhere yeah, in between. Mama worked two jobs, and uh, we have a foster family. And some people, yeah. yeah. So everyone grew up somewhere different. Sometimes your uh, ethnicity holds. And you by back. the way, in a divorced household where my mother stepped up and stepped in, and just because my dad wasn't there didn't mean I, you know, I had no damn chance. There were other factors. Well, he was there for a while. He was there for a year and a half. Really. Yeah. When did he cut out? I was an eighteen year old pregnant mother, had me at nineteen, my sister at twenty, and they were divorced a year and a half later. And, and now he's you know, he still played a role in our lives, but my well, poor mom had to raise us both. Well, and she had a kid a with a horrible learning disability and she struggled, but she how made do you things play a work. role in your life. 
He plays, he's played, now he's played a more profound role. But well, he, sure, but now he, if you're rich and good looking. Hardly, <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> he's hardly. Uh, my father, <laughs> he's played a very important role, and that's right. But he wasn't raising me day to day. My mother was. And, 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 and so a lot of folks can overcome that. But I know. You're the exception, though, not the rule. I don't know. I know a lot of divorced families. Well, I'll tell you what. They've done pretty well. And so it's just it's not as easy I'll, as suggesting because you don't have a yes, father it that it's automatic no, no. that your lot in life Go is Go to sort prison of, and find out what percentage of those folks with have learn, a dad in their life. Or with learning disabilities right. or with huge Very social. Small, small. Well, I don't know about that. With huge socioeconomic issues. Well, here's all with I'm, generational all poverty. I'm suggesting. There's a lot of in, other issues. In government. Start big, and then we'll get down to the small stuff. I like sweating the small stuff and then getting the big stuff. I think it's the all opposite. Right, thank you. All right, it's bottom-up right. thinking, not top-down right, thinking. All right. I got to tell you what. Uh, I'll tell you what. <laughs> I've enjoyed this. I'll tell you top-down. It's down. been a good discussion. Uh, listen, I love it. Look, I like a debate. I like a, yeah. I like a spirited argument. I, I, I respect you, and I, and I appreciate I respect you coming you. in and I, and I agree with fundamentally what you're saying. I just want you to open up to consider other factors. I understand that there are many factors that go into almost everyone's situation. I and and that everyone cannot be looked at as a group, but as an individual. You had your upbringing, I had my upbringing, Allison had her upbringing, and it's hard to lump us all into one thing. But I'm saying when you're addressing a problem, whether it's polar bears or a certain ethnicity, well, you and spend and, time in Winnipeg obviously. and test scores. Look at them as a group and then try to focus on the big problems and then work your way down to the smaller ones. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> you need go to meetings so we can keep this going even when you head back up to your beautiful palatial state uh, outside of Tiburon. Oh, yes, Jesus. go to meeting with HD Faces brought to you by Citrix, a powerful, simple way to meet and collaborate. You can share documents. See, this is this is what the – this is tech, baby. Yes. This is what's going to bring California. Elliot yes. Gould, oh, am I right? Book. Yes. Yes. You can start hosting face-to-face -face online meetings today with GoToMeeting. Always. That's Elliot Gould. GoToMeeting free for 30 days. So we had one guest that said nine words in 90 minutes, and then we had Gavin Newsom come in here and say more words mm -hmm. than everybody the else. average amount, we had two pretty good guests. Yeah. yeah. Who, was, who was your first guest? Elliot Gould last was last night. Was last night. Go he to, said nothing. Well, <laughs> pretty much. What you're hearing now Here's is more he than said. he said. Here's Fine, said. thank you. Yes. <laughs> Go to meeting.com, click on the tried free button and I think use you'll love it. the promo code Adam. And you know what? I gotta tell you, uh, Gavin, I must apologize. I've been uh, popping my extends uh, higher testosterone H T. It's got me all beaked up. I'm beaked out of my mind. <laughs> Allison, we need to have sex right now. Supports increased testosterone. That's not your foot poking me? <laughs> oh, no, I don't know. Increased Jeez. muscle mass, increased energy and vitality, <clears throat> maximum performance in the bedroom, and uh, supports increased desire, libido, and all that good stuff. Seriously, I'm on day number three, and I've never felt more potent in my life. <laughs> Come on. I'm running. <laughs> I'm running for district selectmen, and no one's going to stop me, Gavin. There you go. Now you're finally getting back in the game. Step up. Run Ste for office. Step up with Jesus. extends higher testosterone. W www.buyht.com. Enter the promo code Adam. Gavin Newsom, I love you, buddy. Thanks for having you coming on. here and scrapping it up. Uh, you're going to do uh, Kimmel. Yeah, Jimmy. What, Kick what, him in the nuts. Is that what you want me no, to do? No, he's the nicest he guy in the world. <laughs> you'll have he a loves great, that. You'll have a great time. It's from with you. <laughs> Citizenville is the name of the book How to Take the Town Square Digital and Reinvent Government. Doing the Lord's work, Gavin Newsom. <laughs> Available on Amazon. You know how it works. And me and Dr. Drew in Denver at the Paramount Theater this Saturday. So, until next time, it's Adam Crawler for Allison Rosen. Gavin Newsom and Ball Brian saying, Mahalo. Shut off a light. And <laughs> shut your mouth. For calling times and topics, follow the show on Twitter at Adam Carolla Show. Follow Ace on Twitter at Adam Carolla. Check out the live podcast. This coming Wednesday at Amalfi Restaurant with comedian John Reap. Next Wednesday from the Irvine Improv will also be live. Adam and Dr. Drew's reunion.